Good afternoon to everybody. I hope you're having a good day and thanks for joining me here at the Time Between Times for another tale, another time, another gathering around the fireplace. Whatever's going on in your world, just relax, sit back, enjoy and take in a story like they used to. So, you know the deal now and how we go about it. So let's start. Tales were always told at the time between times. The time when it was neither night nor day, but the sun has gone and the sky is grey. That is the time when people would see ghosts. People would see lights in the sky. People would see dragons. People would see beasts of the forest. And that was the time of stories. The time when people would gather around the fireplace, deep in the forest, knowing that they were safe here at the time between times where they would listen to stories. So put away your books, put away your televisions, put away your nagging thoughts and your worries and join us here for just a few moments. Today's tale is one of the most famous in all of Wales. One that nearly everybody knows. It's the tale of the dragons of Dinas Embris. Dinas Emrys, north of Wales, a place so dark they say the sun only shines there for an hour a day. The mountains rise like peaks on either side. And deep in Dinas Emrys is a place where something magical happened a long, long time ago. Many years ago there was a king called Vortigan. Now Vortigan had been king of all Wales, but he had seen his kingdom grow smaller and smaller and smaller as Saxon invaders had taken more and more of his land. His people had known defeat after defeat. And now they were few and their kingdom was small and Vortigan's heart was low. For his kingdom was almost no more. He gathered what was left of his people in small crowds and they made a camp in Dinas Embris. Now for those of you who have been there, you will know that that's not the place to stay. Food, there is little. Dangers, there are many. Sun, there is next to none. And rain, there is a plenty. Yet they gathered in Dinas Embris and far away Vortigan could hear the sound of the drums of his enemies. He did not know what to do. He sat in his tent, his advisers around him, and decided that here, in Dinas Embris, he would make his stand. He was a big man with a great big beard. And he talked like this. My warriors, my people, here we will make a stand. Here we will build a fortress that our enemies will break off its walls like the waves on the cliffs of the west. Here we shall make towers that reach to the sky. And here we will win our victories before we win back our land. Agreeing to what their king had to say, his workmen got to work. And out they went into the mountains, gathering slate and rock and stone and bringing it together. And started to build a tower, just like Vortigan said. They built it stone upon stone, brick upon brick, wood upon wood, and thatch on the top. Until at the end of just a few days, there was Vortigan's castle, its walls reaching high to the sky, its towers. It was said that if a man stood upon the top, he could reach and touch the moon. And yet, Vortigan was pleased, so pleased he felt that victory may at last be in his grasp, and yet he went to sleep. For the next day, he would bring his people inside the walls of his castle. Into his tent he went, lay down, closed his eyes, and fell fast asleep, snoring loudly. In the darkest part of the night it happened. It started like a row, low grumbling underground, like some great beast far away moving grew closer and closer until it stood outside his tent like thunder and started to roar until Vortigan sat up and heard the noise. He thought his enemies were upon him. Everybody, get to arms, to arms, there is a... B but then the whole valley started to shake and as Vortigan reached out of his tent, his castle had crumbled and fallen to the ground. 
laying pieces all upon the earth of Dinas Ebris. Of course, Vortigern was crestfallen. Here was his kingdom, here was his greatest creation, and now it lay down and broken upon the floor. He wept and wept some more. But he was resilient, was Vortigern. He had fought many battles. He had lost many battles and lost many people who were dear to him. But he decided to build the castle again, stone upon stone, brick upon brick, wood upon wood, and on the roof the finest of thatch, until at the end of a few days the castle stood tall and proud once more. And Vortigern again called his people in. And again that night when it grew pitch black, and he lay there in the darkness the groan started louder and louder until at midnight once again he rushed out and saw the castle had crumbled down to the ground a third time a third time he gathered his stonemasons his people and started to build stone upon stone brick upon brick wood upon wood on the roof the finest thatch and on the third night the same thing happened and the castle crumbled to the ground once more and not only did the castle crumble, but so did the hopes of Vortigern. His people looked at him with expectant eyes, wondering what was next. Just over the mountains they could hear their enemies gathering for a final push to destroy the kingdom of Cymru. Vortigern walked down to the lake and sat, throwing stones into the water, alone with his thoughts at the time between times. Just as the sun was starting to fall behind the mountains and the lake was but a shimmering mirror, Vortigern realised a figure was standing behind him. He turned around quickly and looked and there he saw a young boy, bright green hair and freckly face dressed in rags. You are Vortigern. You are the king here, said the boy. You yes, I am. I can show you why your castles are falling down. I can show you what is causing this destruction. Come, follow me, he said. Vortigern was nervous. None of his warriors were around, and here was this young lad who'd appeared out of nowhere like one of the Talwith Teg, and yet Vortigern decided that he would give him a chance followed the young boy into the mountains above Dinos Embris, into a cave so dark he could barely see his hand in front of his face. But summoning all his courage, he stepped inside and went deep into the earth. The boy led him down and down and round and round until he came to a great cavern far below the earth. And there on one side of the cavern was a small wooden chest. And on the other side of the cavern another small wooden chest. A great waterfall roared down one side of the cavern and lights green and red and blue seemed to shimmer all around, illuminating this underground world. Come here, come here, said the boy. And Vortigern and the young lad hid behind a great rock. Shh, it's time to watch. Vortigern was impatient, but he had come this far so he decided to wait. Slowly, the chest on one side of the room started to creak and open. Out came a great clawed hand, full of white scales, and then another great clawed hand, full of white scales. Then pulling itself from the box came a huge white dragon that almost filled one side of the cavern. The, ca the dragon reached up, its wings started to flap, and it flew round and round and round the top of the cavern, breathing ice which froze the water as it fell. Vortigan hid behind the rock. Oh no, what's going on? Shh, said the boy. Look over there. And there on the other side of the cavern, a small chest opened, and out came a red, clawed, scaly hand. Followed by another red clawed 
scaly hand, and then pulling itself from the chest came a huge red dragon, which flew up into the cavern and started to go round and round and round. The white dragon roared around this side, the white red dragon roared around this side, then the red dragon opened its mouth and shot flame, which melted the ice and the water started to flow once more. The both dragons circled and circled, fear far beneath the earth, and then clashed in the middle of the cavern with a bang, and the whole cavern started to shake. The rocks would fall. Vortigan panicked. Oh, oh, what's going on here? What's going on? Shh, said the boy, watch. And they watched as the dragons battled into the night. This is what's causing your castles to fall down. This underground, deep underground, said the boy. But what does it mean, said Vortigan? What it means is this that every day the red dragon, the dragon of Cymru, the dragon of Wales, does battle with the dragon of its enemies deep below the earth. And every day these dragons will battle and every day these dragons shake the earth and cause all manner of buildings to collapse and all your dreams to collapse. But know this, one day that red dragon will triumph and destroy and kill the white dragon. And then the people of Cymru will be lords in their own land once more. But how do you know this? How do you know this, said Vortigan? For I can see the future, said the young boy. And now I must go, for in your future you shall see me once more. What's your name? What's your name, boy? My name is Merlin, said the young lad. And he vanished. As the dragons did battle deep beneath the earth, Vortigan rushed into the cavern, up and to the left, back and to the right, until he burst out into Dinas Emrys once more. And then he had an idea. As the dragons battled deep beneath the ground, he knew that this was no place for a castle. This was no place to make a stand. But he got his weavers and his sowsmiths to make a flag with a green base a white sky and a red dragon, its hand raised as if for battle. And Vortigan rode at the front of his armies, waving this banner. And victory was theirs, victory after victory after victory. And that is how the dry gorch, the dry koch, the red dragon, Came the flag of Wales, all because of the stories of the dragons of Dinas Emrys. And that red dragon was carried by Henry, who became Henry the Seventh, at the Battle of Bosworth. And amongst all sporting events and all churches and municipal buildings, the red dragon of Wales still flies. One of the oldest tales of Wales, but also one of the greatest. The dragons of Dinas Embris. Diochamaur, thank you for joining me here again at the Time Between Times. Please, if you like these videos, leave a nice thumbs up and subscribe. And also leave a nice comment so I know I'm not just staring at myself on a screen or Richard the Ghost, that I have listeners. And I know you are there and I thank you for listening. But please, any stories you'd like to hear, ghost stories or folk tales from any part of the world, and I will tell them. Diochamaur, thank you very much. And take care. See you next time at the Time Between Times.